Hi there and welcome back to Echelon, book 1. I'm Byron. Oh, I see slime. <sighs> slime sees me too. And uh, I've lost half my mana again. Yeah, this in the beginning I have to rest often. Can't be helped, I'm afraid. Can't be helped. Okay, it looks like we have that now. I'm just trying to make sure that I do not overlook any nice goodies on the ground. I've never encountered another hollow stump like in the beginning of the game. Oh well. Hey, there seems to be civilization on the outside of that little river lake thingy. Uh, but that's as far as we go, apparently. Okay. Can you swim across that? I mean, you're only wearing like leather armor. Can you can you can you swim across that? The current can't be that bad. It's like three of your body length. Could almost jump. Mm. Apparently, no, you can't. So here's nothing. Okay. Hi, I see a salamander. Several, actually. Take a look at it. Northwest Grimhold, Northeast Aridel, Southwest Elder Hollow, Southeast Salted Coast. Okay. That actually takes us back to Elder Hollow, okay. takes us back to those barrels. Fine. Hey, what about you? Can't see you. Goodbye. Oh, more slime. I'm not really sure. Let's see. He didn't see me. No, he didn't see me. <sighs> Level up. Okay, um... You should not save, I hate that. Okay, <laughs> now we save and call it level up.
So now I'm a greenhorn apparently. Feel much better now being a greenhorn. <clears throat> so I want more perception. And um Arcane Elemental. Goes up. No, maybe... I don't know, Arcane Divination is also nice to have, so... Let's put it like this. Yep. So, now the good thing is we have our mana back. That's why I did that. We should be able to cast the level 3 far out now. Yes. They still save against that shit. Okay. What do we get? Detox, short bow, and uh, gold? There's a corpse. With another helmet. Barrel with heavy armor. But the good news is we are now on level 2. And that's pretty much it. There were a few salamanders here, if I remember correctly. Yes, there's another one here. And he's dead too. Hold it. Can I go out here? Yes, I can. There's another slime. I do not have enough mana. But I have a mace to your face. And that's it. And it's getting dark again. Amazing. This actually takes us to the Northern Parish, okay? Back to South Parish. We need to rest. That's enough. Um, there's a town sign nearby. Walk over next to it and touch it to activate this location in your quick travel menu. You are entering a village that is smaller than the deserted one you evoked earlier. The streets appear to be mostly vacant, yet sounds of life can be heard within the walls of the buildings. You are hopeful that talking to the locals in this town may help you make some sense of your situation. This is Aridel. Very nice. Who are you? Pay your taxes, citizen. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's see. This door is locked.
Okay. But sadly, this thing is also locked. Ah, uh, but the guard is still friendly, right? You didn't see that. You had nothing, right? Greetings. Yeah, he did. He didn't know shit. Good. Arida Council House. Let's rest for a moment. Because I need my mana back. Okay. Need some light. I saw the crime being committed. Not good. Okay. So we cannot use our um, mace on the door, the here time. Luckily, magic doesn't make a sound. So, again, we rest. Sadly, um, my mana, my amount of mana, uh, my mana pool is actually kind of low, and I have to do that several times now. Sucks to be me, I guess. And the longer you rest, the higher the probability is that you get attacked by monsters. But I guess at that point I'm still decently okay with them. What would we get? Probably f fire salamanders or those blood-sucking bats. Not the biggest problem, really.
So one more rest should do the trick. No, wrong button. Thank you. Ah, 26 is well, not as high as I wanted to be, but it's all we have right now. Don't mind me. I'm just going, you know, take a leak. Nothing. Nothing sinister going on here. And what do we get? Ah, potions. Very nice. Healing potions too. And uh, two unknown potions actually. Mm -hmm. <coughs> anyway. My job here is almost done. Because there are a few doors here. Just as if you're wondering, that door is locked. And I'm in. And I get spider soup. That's not too bad. And you're still okay with me. Robbing your people blind. Don't cause any trouble with me. Never. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I have never caused any trouble anywhere. Let's rest. So sadly, this door is also locked. But luckily, nobody can hear us here. What do we get here? Okay. I take all that. So, 
The rest of those should not be locked. Village of Aridel Council House. Who are you? You see an older distinguished woman standing in a room nicely decorated with tapestries and fine rugs. She appears very as if she carries with her much stress and is in need of rest. Greetings, traveler. I'm Eleanor Mistelpine, council head here in the village of Aridel. We get very few visitors out this way, so please, if there's anything I can do for you during your stay, please do not hesitate to ask. You nod to her as you introduce yourself as Byron. I'm looking for a man named Maddock. Oh yes, Maddock is an elderly gentleman who lives just down the street southeast of here. He lives in a small house on the other side of the Bethel of the Grey Moon. He's a bit of a codry old man, not too fond of visitors. Thank you. Do you have time to answer some questions for me? Certainly, Eleanor says enthusiastically. What is your question? I woke up in an abandoned house southwest of here and I don't know where I am. Southwest, you say? It sounds like you just came from Elder Hollow, a nearby village that was ruined a few years ago. Eleanor sighs as if she is reflecting on the event. Well, now you are in Aridale. We are a small coastal village located in a region known as South Parish in eastern Thermore. Rest of here is Grimhold, the old fortress that used to take travelers into Tangletree Forest. North of here is North Parish, and south is an area called the Salted Coast along the Southern Sea. Porter, the owner of the Old Roost Tavern, sells miscellaneous supplies. He may have a regional map of the area if you think that would help you. I'm glad to know where I am, but it doesn't explain how I got here. Hmm, your situation is very odd indeed. Eleanor says with a puzzled look upon her face. She steps back and quickly examines you. Well, I know everyone here in Aridale and the surrounding region, and I have never met you before. There have been several shipwrecks along the salted coast to the south in recent weeks. Perhaps you were a passenger or a hand on one of these ships and have suffered amnesia. Or maybe you were bitten by one of the vile creatures which roam this area. Many of these beasts produce toxins that have unknown effects on humans, possibly even memory loss. Why don't you stay in Aridale for a couple of days and see if your memory returns? You can visit Father Michael next door in the Bethel of the Green Moon if you need further healing and can get a room at the Old's Tavern. Old's Roost Tavern. Um, I have seen many strange beasts roaming outside, around outside the village and ruined buildings. What has happened to this land? Eleanor seems almost surprised by your question. You must be from far outside Thermo if you're unaware of the events in this region. She takes a sip of tea and sets down her chipped cup before continuing. Well, this land is embroiled in a war and we are currently fighting with the Oracle. What you see out there are beasts that roam the land and the ruins. What you see out there, the beasts that roam the land and the ruins are all remnants of this war. What is this war regarding? It is regarding honor and justice. It's about reclaiming something that was taken from the people of Thermor. Three years ago, without reason or provocation, the Oracle chose to undermine centuries of peaceful coexistence with us by stealing the crooks of ages straight out from under our noses. The crooks, the very spirit of Thermor, taken as a vagabond would take an apple. Of course, there was a huge public outcry over this event, and the council issued a proclamation stating their actions constituted an act of war. We have been fighting this conflict with them ever since. What is the Crooks of Ages? The Crooks of Ages is Thermor's most prized artifact, a jewel of absolute perfection and a symbol of Thermor's majesty. When humans first settled in this region long ago, the Crooks was discovered by miners within a single block of granite. After it was removed from the stone, it became an object of inspiration and power for all of Thermor. For 100, 300 years it has been rested in a vault in Spire, our capital city, only to be brought out once per year during the summer festival so that all Therish citizens could view it. And it was stolen? Yes, three years ago an Oracle agent broke into the vault through a secret tunnel and took it. They took it because they coveted it. From the very day it was found and pulled from the rock, the Oracle claimed ownership of it. This act of theft is an insult to all of Therma. The Chancellor has vowed to continue the military action until the jewel is recovered. Who or what are these Oracle? Hmm, not much known is about them. But not, mu not much is known about them, really. From what I understand, they are a race of underground dwelling creatures. Some they, they are t say they are twisted descendants of the dwarves, but no one really knows. They are horribly bothered by the sun and never come above ground, even at night, because the open air scares them. 
They thrive in the dark, narrow passages of the underground, surrounded by stone. They rarely fight on their own. They prefer to swarm their enemies with the underground creatures that they seem to hold command over. That is why this land now is so plagued with wild creatures. They use these creatures to wear us down to drive us from these lands. Eleanor pauses. Say, I have a book of the history of Thermo and a drawer beside my desk. You are welcome to take it if you want. It is rather outdated, but perhaps there is information here that can be of help to you. Okay. I need supplies. Can you tell me a little about your town? Of course. This is my office where I conduct the village's business. Next door is the Battle of the Green Moon, run by Father Michael, who offers healing services. Up the street to the northeast, you'll find the Old Roost Tavern, the Magic Emporium, and the Wayward Blacksmith Shop. Eridal is a very small village, and we get very few visitors out this way due to the war. You are welcome to stay as long as you'd like. The local merchants are always happy to see a new face in town. Thanks for your time. So, you have something for me in here, you say? A history of Thermo, okay. This hefty tome recounts the early years of Thermo's history in exhausting detail. Thankfully, the first chapter is an abridged timeline of events covered within the book. Chapter 1, an abridged abridgment of historical events concerning Thermo's, Thermo, eastern province of Echelon. Year 390, Dwarven explorer Koro Keyhammer reaches the eastern lands known as Thermo and reports of vast natural resources in deposits of gold, ore and gemstones. Year 405, the first permanent settlement called Lone Loft is established in the mountains of western Thermo. Its founders are primarily miners and surveyors. Year 409, Lone Loft settlers report that they have encountered a peaceful race of subterranean peoples known as the Orakur. They are, are described as dwarvish in build, but more adapted for permanent life on the ground, with large eyes and little hair. Year 419. Skirmish is a race over control of the mines, as the Oracle claim the settlers are stealing minerals from what they refer to as the Great Underground. By year 423, these small skirmishes have escalated into war, later to be called the Plague Wars. Dwarven settlers sign an accord absolving themselves from warring with Oracle because of perceived kinship. Because of this accord, the Dwarven people abandon their claims and leave Thermor. Thermor forever becomes predominantly occupied by the race of men. Year 425. While mining for copper, a settler named Sam of Thorabur discovers a massive gemstone that would become known as the Crooks of Ages. Because of the ongoing conflict with the Rakua, the rough stone is hidden away in Bastion Spire, a stronghold which would later become the capital of Thermor. Year 433. The first governing body of Thermor is formed. It was decreed that the lifetime chancellor, a bad idea anyway, lifetime is always a bad idea, would be elected to represent the will of people. He is given the highest authority and has chosen has a council of twelve advisors known as the Grand Scholars serve with him. Four hundred thirty five Chancellor Mars is elected as the first governor of Thermor. Under his leadership, Thermor establishes the Commonwealth Guard, which becomes the turning point in the war with the Rakur. 444. The Rakur are suppressed and driven deep on the ground. Chancellor Mars declares victory in the war. The Rakur disappear completely, and many assume the whole populace must have succumbed to disease or starvation. Dwarven lords from outside Thermor condemn Chancellor Mars for his unethical warfare tactics. Relations between the race of dwarves and men are fractured. <laughs> 471. Chancellor Ma dies after 36 years of distinguished service. Chancellor Ma II, later known as the Great One, supersedes his father as Chancellor. So he's actually king, right? This officially begins the golden age of expansion and prosperity for Thermor. 509. Chancellor Taurus I supersedes Ma II. 537. Chancellor Katera II supersedes Chancellor Taurus I. There is an entire entry here that has been blacked out by ink. 590. Goblin skirmishes arise in Krakamir. The Chancellor, unwilling to squander resources defending a wasteland, concedes Krakamir to the goblins. Elsewhere in Thermor, the Commonwealth Guard is successful in eliminating the goblin threat. That was a mistake. You should have kicked them out there too. Seven, 627. A devastating earthquake shatters the eastern province, tearing great rifts into the land. The Orakor, long believed to have been decimated, reappear from the great fissures. 
Surveyors who spot them claim they appeared skittish and non-hostile. Elusive and rarely seen above ground, the reappearance of the rock was not considered a threat and they are all but forgotten. Yeah, something drove them out of the underground, I, I think. The timeline ends here and although it looks like the following page may have been ripped from the book. Okay, so we know a little about uh, the history of this land now and we will call it a video. So thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.